YouTube. Today we're going to play some standard red black aggro. I think this is likely what our team's going to play for the <coughs> for the standard seat at our tournament next week. Um, might not play these rekindling phoenix because I'm going to try these out this league. I've been playing a different version, which is a little more Chandra, a little more Hazret and Empty. It doesn't play any of the phoenixes, so I think the phoenix is a little poorly positioned at the moment. Um, I just, it's like, it's not super great against all like the seal aways or all of the, uh, or all the ballistas and chain whirlers. But if the, if the mono white, if like the white black aggro decks start to do better, then I do think that we're going to need some way to hit the skies because that's the best way to beat that deck, I think. So pretty, pretty new. Straightforward stuff. I believe this is either one or two cards off the exact 75 that the Jessup brothers, the main deck, ran off of. And Cyborg's a little different. We kind of Doomfall for Varaska's Contempt because I want I want an answer, an exact answer to Hazret. And because like when Hazret comes down, it's, it's really tough for this deck to win. And if we can just get, just have something that guarantees to kill Hazret, I want to be there. Um, I added a couple Dire Fleet Daredevils. I cut the duresses because they just didn't feel super impactful in the matchups that I needed them. And the Dire Fleet Daredevils are very good against Mono Red, which is, I think, where this deck needs some help. This deck needs help against... To what I've been playing, this deck struggles against a lot against... Uh, a lot against... What was I going to say? It struggles quite a bit against um, Mono Red and then like the other White Black, white black Vehicles decks. It, Dire Fleet Daredevil is really good against the Mono Red decks. And we have three Sweltering Suns to help with that other version. But let's jump in a league and get everything going here. My wife sent me a funny picture. Yeah, I'm a little concerned... Like, this version, because, like, I don't think that, though, this version might be a little bit better. It might be decent. Like, the Phoenixes are decent, I guess, against the control decks if you can hold up removal to, like, maybe kill your own creature in response to a, a seal away. This is not the greatest Hazard deck, because, like, when you play Mono Red, you just go, like, you curve right out, and then you just turn them all sideways. Um... <coughs> Um, you just turn them all sideways. This deck doesn't necessarily like have a lot of those kind of draws. They can have like triple one drop, you know, explosive one drop draws, but they're not as common as they are in mono red. So like the hazard gets down there. It's not like a turn four swing. It's oftentimes like a turn four activate inevitability kind of card. Sorry, I'm just setting all my stream up here. Just give me one second. I should have done this beforehand, but I should get my music going. Um, this hits a bit slow, but it's okay. If you're not gonna mulligan this, it'd be nice to have a one drop to get like a bow dad going on. I definitely think that uh, that something that like I is really underrated about this deck. It's just how great Bowmat Courier is. Like, if we had a bow, like, I don't think we're going to win now. Like, we're just a little off curve. But if we had, um, I guess I should play, no, I should play Ballista because it's mana efficient. If we had, like, a Bow Dad on one, I would feel a lot better about our spot here. But without, without a Bow Dad, like, it's, it's definitely going to be <clears throat> a little tougher to get, to get moving here. Double tap layer for my opponent's nice. Probably means they're gonna disallow on three. Well, we're gonna put a lot of power on the board at least. Really want to hit a land drop, and then like hopefully we attack next turn and it puts enough pressure on our opponent to get them to ditch a card. Or to like interact with the creatures. Now if we'd have gone the other way, we'd have got one more point in. Well, we had 18, so 
We did lose eight point of damage. Wow. So now we're just gonna like we're gonna tap with everything and just jam this Chandra. We draw land. We draw land. That sucks. Next turn we're probably gonna attack with. We're about to seal away happen. We're gonna attack with everything probably but Scrounger. Oh, that was a misplay by me. Yeah, I want. I didn't want to play into like essence scatter, but now. I just want to, like, good mechanics usually is to wait till after combat to play a creature, but in this instance, it's bad. I should have should have been aware of that. So I'm just going to attack with both of these Inventors of Precedent, Apprentices. I don't want to get my... I'm going to play another... We're not going to make the same mistake. And this means if they counter this, then I can attack with everybody. But because they didn't counter it, I'm just going to attack with these two. One more land there would be great, because we could have, like... Done a real tasty attack, and then pro hopefully gotten in there, um, landed the Chandra. And fixing their mana. Okay. And we could have jammed into this Glimmer also, which is something that's like, it's a really underrated part about playing a deck like this, or playing against these control decks, is you have to like, you have to punish them for Glimmer. You, like, you have to like, make it really difficult for them to be able to take a turn off. I'm not going to show that mountain until we after we attack. So, I think now I'm going to get in with this, with one of these scroungers. This just might make this juicy enough for my opponent to snap off a set of the wreckage. Okay. The lands are going to help with our Chandra. We're definitely in a rough spot. This matchup does get better after sideboard. When you get access to like more Chandras, things like Argos, Bloodfast, and Doomfall. Like Blood Bloodfast is the truth. We we've kind of mulliganed twice here. It's unfortunate. We would love to have a Bodad in here. Opponent oh, misses land drops. So I'm gonna cast this. I'm just gonna cast this for three. I don't think I need to worry about this scrappy scrounger getting in the battlefield. I guess I leave myself open to like disallow plus seal away with this line of play. Because like I don't have any pressure on the board, that's exactly what's gonna happen here. I guess maybe I could have done that for one left for having it as a two drop, so I could have maybe abraded this. I really hope my opponent doesn't hit a lane drop. I would say we're pretty far behind in this game. They're on main phase of Glimmer, or they're on O-ring this. So they're just looking for lands. This is a really good play for my opponent. I don't think enough people do this. A really good draw. This is where, uh, situations like this is where Hazard would be very good. Less good now, probably, but that's not a bad draw. So I get this land out, and I probably will abrade my own Scrappy Scrounger if my opponent goes to kill it. Oh, what is this? Oh, I got a Magic Online player reward. trouble here. Bodad's a pretty good draw. So we can get Bodad down. It's going to at least let us do a lot of redrawing. Definitely going to upgrade my Scrapping Scrounger if they try to kill it. Alright, what is their seal away target? Might target the Bodad. Like they, they might just have enough... Um, I was going to say, they might have enough gas in order to... Uh, in order to uh, just power through my scrappy scrounger, which isn't going to take too much. 
The nice thing is, is that we can get, like, we've got, with the, with the four disintegrations, we do have some reach. Scrap comes back. Also makes, like, the bow mat less punishing. We're not discarding that many cards. So we're going to play this pre-combat because if I, I want to be able to pop Bodad if I need to. That gets countered. So we're not getting gear hulked at least. If this is a settle the wreckage. Okay. Say, if there's been a settle the wreckage there, I probably would have just abraded this and sacked this. Because we got we have good inevitability. Kind of soft like a Teferi. Yep. This Teferi's probably gonna bounce Scrappy Scrounger. Or Bodad. Okay. So we're gonna send Bodad right at Teferi. And we know we know that Scrappy Scrounger is our next card. I think I want to pop this in case we get something to do on our own turn. We're drawing Scrappy. Yeah, that's pretty good. Looks like my opponents have six. Counter spell for this, but like main deck negate. We're actually alright with that. Because this Pia is represents like this being lethal. My opponent knows what we're drawing next turn. Hey, how's it going, Farby? How's your back doing? We're just gonna we're just gonna send it. We've been through the top half of our deck and we haven't quite hit. This is a torrential gear hulk. God, imagine if we could just get him with the D here. At least we're gonna thin our deck out because like now, in license disintegration is lethal. just texted me. Uh, I'm just going to get these lands out. Brace comes off tomorrow. Good. Good. Glad to hear it. Sorry, my friend. Need some sideboarding tips for the deck they're playing. Sorry about that. I was just multitasking. So this is kind of a this is nice. A little sign of weakness here. I'm just gonna play this harvester out before combat. Probably just pass. There's no need to just run this thing face first in this gear hulk. <coughs> if I put a gear hulk in the gate, which would be which would definitely slow us down. We don't have a lot of Yeah, we don't have too, too much time against that. We need an unlicensed disintegration. We've, we've, we've gone through half of our deck and we haven't found an unlicensed disintegration yet. If we can get one of those, we should be in pretty good shape. But, I mean, if, like these gear hulks are gonna kill us next turn if we don't find it. So, we gotta 
beat us up. Only attacking with one, which is good, which means they don't have an answer to this. We can get this through, because they would, they would definitely just be attacking with both here. Sad. Gonna pass. Just cracking it with one. Come on, we need a disintegration. A pia. And a braid. A ditch and a braid. Play it and pass. I'd like to, uh, hopefully I draw, well, they're going to go for it this turn. At least I think they are. I should have upkeeped it. That was a mistake. I should definitely upkeep that. I think they drew that. I don't think they have any any answers to this. Well, I don't know. They could easily have a disallow. They don't have any removal in their hand that they've been attacking with both gear hulks. Well, got it. Oh, that sucks. That sucks. All right. So now I want to bring in the Bloodfasts, the Chandra, the Contempt, the Doomfalls, and I actually like the Daredevils. I don't really like the ballistas, the sprays aren't very good, though the nerd apes might be worse than the ballistas. I don't necessarily think I need to land. I'm gonna go with ballista is better than nerd ape. Like, well maybe we also probably don't need all these abrades, so the ballistas are probably just decent. It's an artifact also. Because we have one, two, six, seven answers to big creatures. I don't think we need to land against the settled bed. Yeah, we're gonna run this back. I don't think Harvester's that bad, Johnny, when you couple it with like Bloodfast and stuff. Sometimes it's turned into just extra cards, you know? Like, it's, it's not great, but... Alright, God. Scry land to... That time I was like, we don't, we don't need the lands, we're good. But then it's a saddle deck. Would you have kept, like, a Nerd Ape or a Ballista in there, Johnny? Land? Uh, yeah, we're probably... We're probably dead. Just kind of mulliganed out of the game here. My first land was... My first hand was six lands, if I remember right. Well, my opponent doesn't have a land either. Holy shit. Playing magic. To be fair, our hand's pretty good. Like we can get this scrap heap scrounger down and start doing something. I'd like to doomfall them before they have the option to Teferi. Makes sense. That makes sense. Auto pass through this. Okay, so we draw a land. I'm, oh man, I'm still gonna jam this Doomfall into this mana because I don't. I want them to, like. I want to punish them for glimmering.
So like even if they get the glimmer, I get to take a card. I'm just gonna counterspell it. Okay. Could have also played Harvester, because Harvester plays a little bit better against um, Teferi. So their hand's just gotta be stacked. The problem is if I jam Hazret, then like, I'm just not really doing anything with it. Like I'm just nugging him. I probably just like have to jam this Chandra, which I mean, it's gonna get countered. If they if they counter the Doomfall, unless they didn't have another counter and like the Doomfall was what, oh my God, I literally just like F6 cause I didn't think this was gonna resolve. That sucks. I was totally like, had it stuck in my head. I was like, there's no way this thing's coming down. All right, we actually can play the Scrounger because we can abrade a Gear Hulk here. I should update that. My the YouTube is now. They didn't even. Okay, well. It seems like an odd abrade. Or odd use of gear hold from my opponent. But you might as well just counter this, right? Like. I was already down to 12. Here comes the Teferi. History. Okay. So we're probably now just gonna start smoking these. Now, I might, I'm probably gonna make mana to play this Harvester. Cause I would like to eventually get this, um, I'd eventually like to get this Hazard down. And if they counter this, like, I, I could do this, like, again, I like to, I like to play in to four mana because, um, I like to play into four mana because it's like the settle slash glimmer. So like they might just settle my scrap heap scrounger, which is seal light, yeah. Okay. Then we can kind of do the same thing next turn. It's so like next turn we have we got a lot of we got a lot of damage on the table. This so a Bane Slayer Angel, yep. Yeah. I draw the land. All right, so we're gonna start by disintegrating Bane Slayer Angel. Cause like, that's just gotta go. I can put my opponent to like one here, but I can't kill them. Cause I can't go like Hazret, make mana and get the blocker out of the way. If this resolves, I can play Hazret and then tick this up. But this easily could be an essence scatter. So let's just see what happens here first. All right. Now I just kind of want to jam Hazard and attack. This, it's either going to be the, the, like this feels like an essence scatter or a seal away. I really don't want to disintegrate this when I could have another Bane Slayer Angel. So I think I'm just gonna make mana, play Hazret, crew, crew this. Then just get him for three, and then disintegration on anything is lethal now. They smack my Chandra here. They're dead to like Chandra plus Hazard activation also. 
They gotta deal with this before I untap. They have to deal with one of these two permanents before I untap. While beating this. They need to beat three cards. And they only have two cards in their hand. So they're just like super dead. They really have to beat four cards. I did not think I was going to win that one. I did not think it. Okay, so... So now that we've seen them play a couple of histories, history makes Walking Ballista pretty laughable. So maybe I want a couple more... Maybe I want, like, Glorybringer. Because, like, the best card that we have probably against history is, like, Glorybringer. So maybe I could just go like cut these three, bring in the glory bringers in the land. Maybe the dire fleet daredevils aren't too good. Like all that, all dire fleet daredevil does is flashback glimmer of genius, or like you can go pre combat dire fleet daredevil to target settle the wreckage before you attack. Sorry, one second. Yeah, the devils don't seem super great. You can just like you can just rip ballista at like turn eight and then just like ballista for four. The daredevils are really I guess the daredevils are really only there for like Mono red, like a blue a blue black mid range deck, and then they're also there for like a snake deck. Basically, they're there for like any fatal push deck, the mirror mono red, and like maybe they're I guess they're not probably just not good enough here. So we definitely want to get like an early bow deck going on, and or an Argyle's blood fast in order to win. Yeah, it's good in the mirror. All right, so we have a we have a quick blood fast. They play so much enchantment removal that I almost want to sandbag the blood fast until I can use it. Because like we have a pretty aggressive start here. We can just go one, two. Then maybe on four we can go blood fast, eat, blood fast, draw a card. So I think I'm gonna start with scrap heap. I'm just gonna curve out. And we'll get into five, that's tough. That is tough for our opponent. Mulling to five on the play as a control deck is like. That's pretty uh pretty game breaking. Something I think I want in this deck maybe moving forward is like one more swamp. Because it gets a little awkward in your post board games with blood fast. Yeah, now that they have mana up, I definitely just they didn't have to negate the blood fast. Which or they I guess they could place they could syncopate it. Well they're hitting all their land drops. Okay, here comes history. All the harvesters. Let me get these down. Harvesters like really weird in this deck. Like I've noticed that it's okay because um, in a roundabout way, coupled with Argyle's Bloodfast, it's cards. Has a very aggressive start. Now we're gonna crack for a bunch here. I could play my Chandra just to mitigate. I could play my Chandra just to mitigate four damage, mitigate eight damage. Feels a tad mopey. But I don't really see my Chandra doing very much else this game.
A shot or a rage just gain a life. So I think I'm gonna do that. Yeah, I think we're just gonna go Chandra down. He might counter this. Yeah, they're gonna, just, they're gonna do it. All right, so they're gonna crack me for eight. I'm gonna go 13, go back up to 15. It's definitely been awkward drawing like all three of them, which, you know, is what it is. Opponent doesn't have a land. Okay, so we drew a land, so now we can start blood fasting. The problem is, are we like holding this harvester back to play defense now that we're doing blood fast things? So we go, I think we kind of want to work this blood fast a little bit. So I think we're going to see if this resolves or not. So let's go to wait here. I would assume this gets counterspelled. Okay, so now we're going to play defense. Well, I mean, we drew three of them, right, Johnny? Like, the first one's pretty good. Like, it's gained us some life. We probably should have activated that on our main phase, because I could have played a Bodad, then a, then a gun in there. All right. Okay, so... I probably want to doomfall my opponent's hand at this point because, like, we're we're just stone dead to like a. Uh, we're probably stone dead to like an angel at this point. Okay, see, so I'm just gonna take this lira. Like, we can we can deal with a settle. The, the, the first Glimmer is going to find lands. I'm just going to take the Lyra, I think. Now are we getting in here? So we're going to go... We're basically only losing one a turn here with this race. So I think I'm just attacking. Well... Yeah, I think I'm just attacking. Because, like... They're gonna go to 11, we're gonna go to 14, then we're gonna go to 10, they're gonna go to eight. We're just gonna keep lifelinking, just recycling through our thing. Yeah, I mean, I definitely don't think three is three is too much. Like it's been, it's been, it's great with the blood fast to keep you kind of like in that back and forth race thing. It's obviously been very poor as we've drawn them here. So they hit their land, which is interesting. So we're gonna give them the option to just like eat this harvester here we really want a second body because a second body lets us crew the other harvester okay so that's also very good and that's very good so one two three four five six so we know this resolves so we can just clear their board and attack with our harvester they probably settle and then we play more of these. I should have done this. This is uh, this is poor sequencing. Now I'm going to kill this before they untap. Okay, so they're just gonna let this go. They're just looking to glimmer. And then we're gonna let them scry, make them think that they're gonna keep this guy around. It might affect their scries and then blow this up. Do some proper sequencing. You just jam the other in case you draw for next. But like, if I just jam the other Johnny, my Chandra dies, right? Because they just attack it. And then I've only got six, right? And they have a settle anyways. They put a card on the bottom. Obviously the worst thing... Do you just draw your whole turn on chat? Oh, yeah. Deals 
three damage to this. They went bottom bottom. The struggle. Okay, so another history, which doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter until it like is ready to ult. Okay, Scrap Heap Scrounger is like a such Scrap Heap Scrounger is such an insane draw. So they have Gideon's Reproach, Glimmer. So we know a couple of the, these cards. Yeah, that was actually just like a really sick draw. So one, two, three, four, three, four, five. So now we just we just get them if they don't have any. Oh no, we don't because well yeah well. No, we don't because this thing right here. Unless we plus, unless we plus into a removal. I guess we don't get them anyways. No, we can't cast that. Well, I guess now we make it so they have to block. Well, no. So they can just Gideon's reproach this. So I think I'm just gonna block. I think I'm gonna hold one back here and block as it's lethal. Well. So if I crew here and attack, they just Gideon's reproach this and it doesn't do anything. So I think we're just go we're just getting in with uh, with this one. And then we're gonna block for our Chandra. And then we'll figure it out next. If they go to play anything next turn, then like Chandra kills them. I think if they act, unless they have land six, they have land six. So they're gonna be able to reproach this. But I think that's all right. It's just more life, which means more cards with the blood fast. It's four damage, target attacking blocking creature. Okay. Gain life. Now we're at a stable life total here. Scavenger grounds is not super great. Okay. So now we just attack with both of our creatures and then give this the unlicensed disintegration. Then we should be in good shape here. So we're either going to tap out and settle. If they play something other than settle, then they're dead because we know the exact hand. I should have played another Harvester first. I missed out on two points. And we got him. Murder Blaze. You know, I put a mulligan to five there. So... That is what it is. I'm gonna grab some water. We'll be right back. <laughs> if I played against the uh, Blue black mid range earlier today, and I killed two scarab gods with dire fleet daredevils, and I was like, yes, that's great. We are ah, uh, good hand. Like this hand's pretty weak to like a turn one Lin or elf. But we're playing against. Okay, so we're playing against the white black deck. This is gonna be a tough matchup. We're probably just gonna ballista and smoke this on our second turn. We just need to not die. And then it's like it's also just so punishing to be on the draw because of these. Oh wow, they're down with a heart. This is that's amazing. Okay, so I have a knight. So I could just play ballista, go block, shoot. Seems like the game plan here. 
Yeah, whenever you have those double scrappy pans, you just struggle so much when you're on the draw. Because, like, against aggro decks, because you just can't block. Which is one of the harder parts of this deck. Okay, there's Gideon. So what is this? Until your next turn, prevent all damage that target permanent would deal. So I've got to shoot this now. I think I'm just going to upgrade this and then go double scrap heap next turn. Because the, the scrap heap doesn't really mean a lot right now. Because like if I play scrap heap, he just bubbles it. And I take three. At least I can upgrade here. I need to like, I need to somehow get to this game where like my Chandra's are going to like, my Chandra's are going to win me the game. I think. I think I'm going to have to win a long game. It's like we're going to get smacked by four with this Gideon. And then we're naked to the Bane Slayer Angel. I would imagine this deck's ahead, very much ahead of our deck in game in game one. And I'm just like stone dead here, right? Play my scrap heaps, not block. Take six, seven, ten. Go to two. Kill, kill, or kill one next turn. Yeah, we're just like stone dead. Yeah, our hand just like couldn't. We couldn't block. And with against against these decks here, these aggro decks on the play. Like if you can't block, you're not gonna win. And that is what happened there. All right, so I want this guy. I want my sweltering sons. Well, we basically just have to turn into like a control deck. Doomfall is probably not good because they go wide. You know, wide I don't, actually, I don't know how wide they do go. Like, I don't know if Doomfall is good against the knight version. Actually, I guess I don't know enough about this deck here. Because <laughs> I know there's two different versions. Because, like, one of them plays SRAM's expertise. Okay, this one looks definitely not as go wide as the other one is. But it's got cards like Fatal Push in it. So I probably want my Daredevils. Daredevil blocks. Or at least trades with that guy. I think we're going, like, full... Full grindy here. So these gotta go. The hazards gotta go. So many cards that I wanna bring in, but not a lot that I wanna take out. I don't like the Nerd Apes. Nerd Apes just gets beat up by the Knights. Kindling Phoenix and Glorybringer fly, which is kind of where we want to be. The scroungers on the play are probably fine. No, they just brick wall these scroungers easy enough. So I think we're going to get rid of these. And cut a Pia. No, cut a Ballista. The Pia can produce a flying blocker. Doesn't play well in the Sweltering Suns. I wonder if I'm supposed to like just board out like a lot of my stuff and then just turn into like a blood fast deck. Like, am I just supposed to go like this? I'm supposed to just go like this? And then I like then I don't have enough to crew this harvester, right? We're, 
we're gonna try this. I don't know if this is right to do or not, but I'm gonna give this a try. Cause like, I don't feel like I can. I don't. I feel like this deck just outmuscles me, and I have to try to interact with it on an access that like on a different access. This deck just goes like very much over the top of me. I need to like get under them, use some removal, then draw a million cards. I tend to like I tend to like the Bloodfast Johnny a lot in this deck when you board in this much removal. You know what I mean? Like and all, all of these games after sideboard, all of these games slow down. Like against the green, they all they all slow down at least a little bit. And I might have to board them out when I'm on the draw. Because like I just gonna have more going on. Definitely need a black mana source. It would be great to have a turn two play. Like right here. We don't have a turn two play, which feels bad. So we're probably gonna leave the Harvester, then get into the Pia or the Phoenix. Yeah, especially considering the Knight doesn't do anything right now, or the Pia doesn't do anything in combat. So mana base is a little awkward at the moment. So we're gonna get cracked. I'm gonna crew with the Thopter because I think I would rather just go to the skies here. If I have to block, I think I'd rather block with the Pia. Though I guess the Pia can pump my Harvester. I think this deck's mana base is like ridiculous. Like you're playing, you're playing the triple white anthem, right? Yeah, like look at this shit. This is egregious. Well, they're on defense, which feels, which is good. But I feel like, I don't know. You don't play the marshal. I guess that makes sense. Using the PTQ list, okay. I guess there's like two different ones. Yeah, okay. Okay, so now. I don't really want to actually give it lifelink because I don't think he has a way to kill this right now. And I would rather give my creature lifelink when I can pump it. Cause like next turn I could definitely see not doing a lot with my mana and then just like putting it all into this, um, putting it all into this harvester. Especially now that they're gonna have this going on. So how much damage is this? Two, four, five, eight. Four, five, eight, ten. Yeah, I think we're just gonna go all in on this um, harvest their life like this turn, especially considering they can, like, cast it out next turn. I will push their guy. You would push the guy in bow mat. I think I, I think I want to get in a big lifelink shot here. Because, like, now all of my flyers are lethal. This is what the Dire Fleet Daredevil's for. I guess the, the Daredevil's much better against this version of the deck, right, Johnny? Okay, so... I wonder if I should, like, on the draw. Maybe maybe we don't need these blood fasts on the draw. And we want, like, another Pia and another one of these. A 
so many threes. Like, part of me wants these nerd apes, but these nerd apes just block so bad against the all the knights. The knights are just so hard to block. These are probably worse on the draw, so I can bring in maybe a couple of these, have a little bit more early game. They might not cut tool graph when they're on, when they're on the play, so maybe I should just Maybe I should just assume they're going to get a little more aggro on the play. Well, if they're going to be a Karn, Liliana, Gideon plan, then we want our Chandra. Maybe the doom falls are just egregious on the, on the draw. Yeah, let's try this. Really, you don't like it? You don't like Lori Dad when it flies into planeswalkers? All right, this hand's good. Hopefully, we can work a bow dad and then just like clean up the board here. Kind of awkward where like the Bow Dad Sweltering Suns deck. But like Bow Dad's so good. Like th this card's like really underrated in all these decks. Like sure, like removal spell into my creatures. I think the really nice part about this deck is it shifts rolls so well. That's a great draw. So now we can like hit the heart. And then we're just gonna take, like if they go creature here, we're probably just gonna take the twofer. Really hope they don't play a Gideon. Our hand is super soft to a Gideon. Okay, now we're just gonna play another thing. Come on, curve out, you bastard. Yeah, I think we just got, then next turn we can Ballista for two. The problem is we're just not gonna be able to do anything against like Karn here. Karn here on an open board is just disgusting. We just gotta hope on my opponent's hands just nothing but like angels. Karn would have been so hard to handle there just because of like, Karn just has so much mana without being able, without being able to like redirect here with a license D. I'm just gonna deadlands this, okay. This is all right. They stone rain themselves and take their play. Um, I think I'm just gonna get on the board, but I don't want to just get like absolutely brick walled by uh, by Karn. And we already have enough removal where this is gonna interact decent anyways. Really want like a Phoenix or a Chandra. And if they deadlands me again, they deadlands me. Yeah, that is what it is. I really want like a Chandra or a Phoenix. Four drop. That opens us up for Glory Dad. So we're both just supposed to be sitting on like so much removal. At least Bliss is gonna nug him. Hmm. Wow. They actually can't like Karn me. With this bliss in play, unless you go to make it, but you can't even card them if you make a token. We're just gonna put a count on this. We're not doing anything else. If they have a removal spell, they have a removal spell.
I don't want to just not do anything with my mana. If I didn't have it there, we got in for another point. We have another point in the bank. Yeah, we got ourselves a serious Mexican standoff here. That's a great draw. That's a good, that's such a good draw because that's two, that's just two bodies. And it turns on the D. I'm gonna cast out my PO, okay. Deal. At least we have something here. <laughs> yeah, we should have enough removal spells. Like we 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 would totally like we might we might still lose this game to a Karn. It's like the first person to top deck a planeswalker probably wins. Because I'm gonna assume that his hand's removal. Like my opponent hits a Karn or I hit a but I only have two Chandras in my deck, right? I think Karn is better on the draw, as a Planeswalker on the draw, than Chandra is. Chandra's really good when you're on the front foot. Scrap Heap, that's annoying as fuck. That's, a, that's like, that's what we, what we boarded out our Scrap Heap Scroungers, right? Yeah. We have two Magma Sprays. Yeah, this Scrap Heap Scrounger is gonna clean my clock. At least I'm gonna be able to get in for a bunch of damage with it. Like it's gonna turn on my unlicensed disintegrations. Yeah, a planeswalker at any point in here breaks the game open. And I'm just gonna like, like I think the longer this game, like with my opponent having a scrap heap scrounger, I wanna go and just save all my life total here. I mean, they're flooding out too. So it's it, the draw is actually kind of at parity. What do you mean, Scrounger is a mistake, Johnny? We're going to keep in. I kind of want to abrade this. Because I want to I wanna be able to kill two angels. Like, angel's what I'm worried about a lot. Like, I think, I think I'm treading water, and I have, I can't beat a planeswalker, but I can beat Karn. Maybe I just take the damage. Because I'm losing the race. It like, doesn't, like, this thing just doesn't feel good, but I think we're just going to keep it. We're, we kind of telegraph a removal to our opponent there, but like such is life. We need a four drop. Oh, damn it. We need one of our four drops or a glory bringer. Even glory bringer would be good here. Cause I'm probably just going to abrade this scrap heap scrounger. And then, like, they're going to be able to bring it back one more time and Glorybringer kind of, like, gets it out of there. I'm playing with uh, Micah and uh, Tom. All right, we're going to cycle this. I'm just gonna give myself the option to make a lot of black mana. I don't really know why. We don't have blood fast in on the draw. Okay, harvester's good. I mean, the harvester probably plays into the settle of the wreckage they have. anything with Scrappy Scrounger if my Harvester lives. My Harvester does not appear like it's going to live though.
So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hit this with the unlicensed with the disintegration again, because like I only need to hit with two more points. Although the dead Deadlands is a big game. Deadlands ends this kind of train. Sack this Deadlands. Shrink my duder. Okay. Okay. Any of the four drops. I kept Hazard in, right? Or did I take Hazard out? I took Hazard out. It's also not trivial that, like, I don't no longer have uh, whatever turned on. Okay, that's, that's not bad. So I'm not gonna use this unless this gets pumped, I think. Though that hits a Planeswalker, so I might just suck damage from this for a little while. And it kind of like, it gives me another attack. Very nice, like a uh, sweet game. It's contempt hitting Chandra's, or hitting Karn is good. Yeah, but we only have, we got one more Ballista in our deck. Yeah. So this is where I feel like I feel like I want I feel like I want Bloodfast. I don't know. Cause like when you get into this 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 section of the game here. My phone it's like my phone's like the flood though. This hits Heart of Kieran. This hits Karn, this hits Baneslayer Angel, so I don't really want to kill this thing. Okay, now I'm gonna kill it. I'm gonna, definitely gonna abrade it. Well, I guess it still doesn't do anything, right? Okay, so now we're probably gonna just contempt this thing. Because the, if we let this keep coming, like we can't really kill this now because then this thing comes back. Oh shoot. Oh, that was stupid. I went through to my combat. Instead of being up a life, we're down a life. Oh, that's frustrating. All right. Yep, no, I, I, I saw that right after it was there. I was like, yep, messed that up. My opponent could kill their own Scrap Heap Scrounger here. Okay. Alright, that is the draw. Because that gives me an artifact also. So that actually means my creature's lethal next turn. <coughs> it checks? I didn't know it checked, Johnny. That's good to know. Six mana, eight mana, nine mana. This is a ballista. Ballista for five. All right. I should have. God damn it! I'm all over the place. I just pissed away some damage. God damn it. Yeah, exactly. well, I'm just sitting here, like, thinking about other stuff and me messing it up there. I should have just deed that thing right there. Well, now I've got, I've got to kill both of these, right? Maybe if I make them destroy the artifact and they get lazy and they just shoot me, then I can hit this scrounger. Or I can hit this, like they just go like shoot, shoot. But 
Like they might act with this on the stack. Like keep hitting me. They reshoot this. They shoot me. That was a good play. That was a good play for my opponent. We saved one life there, but we could have had our opponent at two, and then Glory Dad would have been lethal. Which is frustrating. removal for sure now I can feel okay like hitting this it's gonna bring the scrap heaps back which is a little annoying actually no so we'll just take one from this and then spray the scrap heaps around here we'll do that right I'm just gonna untap because hopefully I hit an artifact and I can. Okay, Bow Dad, my boy Bow Dad. It's we're gonna do this before we attack because then Bow Dad's untapped, so we can't get seal away. Oh my God, we gotta play like shit and get rewarded. Each one of us have 11 lands. Dude, Murder Blaze sometimes steals games for you. All right, two and out. Two really good matches against blue, white, and white, black. Cards I'm not really, I'm really not sold on these Rekindling Phoenixes. Like, they easily could be the second Hazret and the third Chandra, which would give me another sideboard slot, which is probably like something cheap like a Magma Spray or another Doomfall. Because like, I just played the Phoenix today because I'm worried about that white-black deck. I'm worried about the white deck, so I want to be able to attack in the air. But... Maybe it's not necessary. All right, give me a land. We got a land. So we'll play Nerd Ape on one. Crack in. My opponent's gonna feed me a bunch of lands here. Oh, got like an Esper control deck of some sorts. Play Scrap Boy before combat. And then pop in. My first ever PTQ, I registered Kurt Ape, which is kind of like Nerd Ape. You know? They're both the same thing, just need different things to make them, make them larger. Get them angry. So we're going to seal away. Nah, nope, we're going to save that seal away from my Scrap Boy. I'm going to play another Scrap Heap Scrounger before combat. This means so that if they seal away this one, I still get in for two points here. Gotta make sure to play my land, my second main phase. Yeah, I made that mistake earlier, because like most of the time you don't want to do anything before you attack. Um, so I did that, and they took away my Scrap Heap Scrounger, and I lost a point on Nerd Ape. So it's like, it's like bad sequencing that turns into good sequencing. So I'm just gonna jam with both of these here. I'm okay getting settled. I can play another Scrap Heap Scrounger and it turns on my hand. I have two cards that are kind of poor against Settle the Wreckage anyways. I wish that I had something else to like jam in here. Cause like they're just gonna Glimmer. But if they go Glimmer into Bane Slayer Angel, they're dead. They need like some kind of, a, they need to play to the board. Which they did. Okay. At least they're not Glimmering. Which is like, if I can make it so my opponent doesn't glimmer to genius, then like, I'm okay with that. 
uh, it's a good draw. So we'll play our Phoenix after combat. I think I'm still going to go in with both. More mana is going to make it so I can turn this Hazard on. It does turn off Murder Blaze. Okay, so they got both. Um, black, red. I could just play the hat. I could just get the Hazard into play. Yeah, I think I'm just going to get the Hazard. Hazard's got more utility as soon as it hits the battlefield. I know that I could just play the Rekindling Phoenix, but, like, I don't have anything to protect the Rekindling Phoenix from, like, Seal Away. So, let's... So, I can't... I can't get him for two damage and play Rekindling Phoenix and Murder Blaze a... Um, and Murder Blaze a Gear Hulk. What I can do is cast this. If my opponent goes Gear Hulk, I guess I can't do that anyways. So we're like this. My opponent's, we're going to figure out if my opponent Gear Hulk disallows or Gear Hulk. It's going to play Gear Hulk Settle. Essence Scatter. Alright, so now I think we're going to hope my, opponent, my opponent's last card is not a Seal Away or another Settle. Looks like it's a cast out. Okay. I think we're going to hold this. And it'll make it so we can get this Scrap Heap Scrounger back. And then it'll be turned on. There's no need to just ditching it for two damage. So it doesn't take a lot to kill our opponent from here. I really would not mind like a gear Hulk settle here. All right, sick. Now we can just play a massive. I think we're gonna leave it. I could like hit it with unlicensed disintegration so it goes back, but now we just play a big old ballista. Bliss is going to kill him quick. I'm going to put a counter on. I'm like, I'm not going to have to murder blaze two things. I might as well just use my mana. I get him for another point of damage, which makes like this makes makes like any like this plus this is lethal without getting into combat now I'm not going to use my mana because I can just play a harvester also I'm just going to cast this Harvester, and then I'm just going to upkeep, shoot my opponent. I don't think there was any card that saved my opponent there. Like, even, we can beat a Disallow because it's got four counters. But... game against the old control deck we want this we want a doom dead doom falls and the blood fast and the land cards i don't want magma spray is not good nerd apes not great i probably can cut anna braid Direfleet Daredevil, at, okay, so they're playing Esper. So the only black cards is probably like the Scarab God. They're not playing any creatures, unless unless they're gonna do the switcheroo and bring in Glinsleeve Siphoner, but if they're doing that, we've got Ballistas. I just wanna know like, what's my upside of cutting these, like 
cutting two blisses and playing two daredevils. Because, like, I can hit a glimmer, which is very good. Your bliss is just such a sick rip in the late game. But I don't want to see too... I don't want to see too many of them as they're clunky. I'm going to cut one and play one. Because, like, if you draw, like, two or three ballistas, it's just not good. Hey, Alex. Alexi. Alexi. X22. Hope you're having a good night. Appreciate you saying hi. Yeah, I think I'm going to go like this. Hazard's not super great in the blood when you bring in the blood fast, but it's also just, like, a very potent threat. It'll just turn cards into, uh... It'll just turn turn cards into damage. Alright, we're gonna keep this hand. This hand is good, not great. But I don't think I don't think we're I don't think you can mulligan this. Bring in my Yeah, my dual got in. Alright, Murder Blaze is not bad. I'll trade tap lands with my opponent. Do you end up picking this deck over Blue Banner you like so much? Scarecrow gets less hate now as well. I think that my, uh, so I'm not playing standard. I think my teammate likes this deck a lot. Like, he likes, you know, everything it does. Like, like he's a big fan. So, I think if I was going to play standard, I would probably play, I don't know. I'm very, I like this deck a lot. I like, that's a, that's a great draw. Let's just play on curve. I like this deck a lot. Um, I like the white, black, the white, black vehicles deck. Um... I think the blue black mid range deck. Now I don't want. I can't. I couldn't kill this. I can't kill it if I wanted to. I think the blue black mid range deck is like really good under the under the radar. You have to build it with like that blue black mid range deck probably needs like multiple chupacabras in the deck. You just need to be able to deal with all those all the aggro. So my opponent just like slams a card. Okay. So I'm gonna jam my Hazret into this mana. Attack. If my opponent settles me, then I'm gonna play Chandra. But if they don't do this here, then I'm gonna attack. I think I got lucky. I do think I misboarded. I think I think I'm supposed to have Bloodfast in my deck. Like especially when you have the Harvesters. Like Bloodfast is so good in this deck. They're gonna make it so like you either gonna choose to Glimmer or counter this, and they're gonna choose to Glimmer. This this heart this this has where it's not okay. Cast out save. <coughs> All right, we get that on lock. So I actually sneak my Chandra into play, make mana, and murder blaze this. So that's why I think, I think, I think that the, I think the white black deck Johnny probably handles creatures a lot better than this red black one does. Because you just like, you get on the battlefield. You're just so huge. You know what I mean? Okay. So they're going to buy, it kind of sucks. We didn't get a card out of our Chandra, but we did get a lot of tempo. All right. Phoenix is a great draw. We can even afford to pump. I should have, I should have played Phoenix pre-combat. Because if I'd have played it, if I would have played it pre-combat and they countered it, I could deal two more points of damage. We're having some five of Brad Nelson's list. The one, like the one stream looks sweet. I think you crushed the blue white decks. Yeah, like I think green fatty's curving out can be a problem. Chupa has been an all star. Has been an all star question. How many cast times we want? I mean, that's in scatters. You're considering Nox Skier Hulk. Yeah, I think the blue black deck's sweet. No, I mean, I don't understand what you mean with it feels safer. Like, oh, we're going to go Control Z. Like, I just love that with this deck, your removal spell, your removal wins you games. Okay, so I'm not gonna attack with my Phoenix. Yeah, 
go. We're just getting in with the thopter. So, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. So it's not lethal. Maybe I should have played Bodad to make it lethal. But like, Bodad just gives me so much inevitability. All right, now you gotta make it pop here. So we're gonna get two swamps because if we draw blood fast, I just wanna be able to go off. Like I would assume that the white deck is better th against this deck. Like if I had to guess. Okay, so my opponent's kind of running on empty. And it's nice that if they play like a siphoner or something, we can glint sleeve it back. We can like fatal push it back. We're pretty, we're pretty weak to a Lyra. Okay, Bodad is these. I really don't want to get Gear Hulk settled. This is what I'm talking about, this freaking Phoenix. So here's what I can do. I can actually go play directly Daredevil, target Fatal Push, attack with my Bomat Courier. If they settle me, sack the Bomat Courier, draw a card, Fatal Push my own Phoenix. Because I want to get Bodad going here. Yeah, dude, Nightbot sucks. I think this allows me to play around a lot of stuff. Why are they countering this? They left up settle mana. I think I'm just gonna be like, like just, just show me the money here. Cause like, I'm so far, like if they have settle, we're both untapping. Yeah, okay. What'd you say, um, Alexi? Oh, it just erased the one that you had there. Okay. Yeah, I, I think the blue-black deck's good. I think that it's like super, super, um, I think it's just underrated at the moment. So we're worried about like Gear Hulk Settle, Doomfall. All right, show, show me the goods. So now they gotta counter this. And if they counter it, I don't think they've got, we're definitely not playing around Settle because they're dead. SCG Ben Figure wrote an article about paper percentage impact in modern and playing any versus that shadow and using Jet that shadow this weekend on the SCG pick place. There was a super interesting build you should check out, but I can't link it unless you want me to. You can link it, yeah. Yeah, you can link it. I, I, I allowed Nightbot to post links, so. You gotta seal away. Show me the money, dude. Yeah. Loser. Just kidding. They probably made the best play. There. Like, the fact they tanked there and figured out what we were drawing. One, two. Just absolute air. Alright, we're three and out. I'm... 
I started. I'm actually starting to stream on Sunday evenings there. Um, our mage, my wife is doing a photo class on Sundays, so I've got. I'm actually doing the double Sunday stream. I need to get rid of Nightbot. I don't know how to do that. Yeah, that's 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 uh that's an odd statement. I feel like you should just level up your life and get off tenure. I appreciate everybody that's showing up and hanging out. Hanging out today. We've got 14 people playing some watching some red black aggro. I like this deck. This deck has a lot of cool stuff. It's got like a little transitional plan. I I think I hate this card. I wonder if you can just play Glory Dad. Like just put these two Glory Bringers in the main deck. I mean, it's probably Aces in the mirror. It's good against the white decks. Because it flies over the top. And then that helps my sideboard a little bit. Like I can put another Braid in and another, uh, I can put like another Magma Spray and another Doomfall to help up my aggro matchups. Johnny, you look like such a tool today when you were on Matt Folk's stream. Jerry is great all the time. The problem, I just hate these Rekindling Phoenixes. Like, they don't feel good. They don't feel good against uh, Chain Whirler decks. They don't feel great against the Seal Away decks. Dude, you were literally asking dating advice on his stream. Everybody's talking magic. You're looking like a tool, man. That's what I thought. I'm gonna keep this. We're just gonna go Ballista into Harvester. This hand's kind of slow. <laughs> I'm a huge fan. He, he's, his stream's entertaining. He's just an entertaining dude, to say the least. It's the white black deck again. This man, it's just so impressive, like how much Ether Sphere Harvester dominates combat. Like you look at this card and it like doesn't look that good, but like you play with it, and you're like, oh my god, this fucking card does everything. Okay, so we're playing against the token one. I still think I'm gonna go get the harvester down. And then probably like sink like just attack with this harvester and try to sink my mana into this ballista because between the ballista and the unlicensed disintegration hopefully we can handle all these stupid servos johnny it's it's y-o-u apostrophe r-e and y-o-u apostrophe r-e can we get some can we get a spell check all right good boy that's annoying Now we're probably gonna play another Harvester this turn. Play off curve a little bit. That's a that's that's a really nice draw. So now we should be able to get at this Gideon next turn, unless they get a blocker. <laughs> well, they they need like I guess I don't know. We should be able to get at this Gideon. I guess my 5-0 in Modern got posted today. Yeah. I'm always happy about that shit. Alright, so what's the plan? The problem is, is this just like screams. This deck play Fatal Push? This deck can't play Fatal Push. It plays the stupid triple white card.
Right? There's no way this deck plays Fatal Push. Right? It's gotta be a madman to play Fatal Push in his um, Benelish Marshall deck, I think. Like, I like to stretch deck building. You know? I like to cut lands. I like to get a little greedy. But, like, I really don't think I like to get that greedy. Okay, so that means if you don't, we're gonna assume they don't play it. So I can actually send Nerd Ape at my opponent and send this. Well, actually, no, I have to send both of these because I need to kill this and put a counter on my Ballista. Well, actually, if I just send both, I don't need to put a counter on the Ballista. But I probably, I might have to. No, actually, I'll probably end up trading my Ballista here. So like so I just murder blaze this the Gideon deals three I really don't want to trade my ballista but I do want to kill this so maybe I'll just let the Gideon live another turn Like we are whittling away our opponent's board. I think I can afford to keep the ballista. They're just gonna let it go. Okay. I think they should have they should have kept it around one more turn. This probably means they have another one. But even another one sucks. The way the push is in the board. Okay, that makes sense. Swam into Benelish Marshall. All right. And they have the Chef at Dunes. All right, this game's gonna get harder. I forgot the life like my dude. So how am I winning? Am I just like pumping this Ballista up enough to kill this? Probably. Is it worth attacking? If I want to draw the land, I can do three, five, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen to me. So they draw a land, they deal eighteen. And then we're we're putting them on a three turn clock, and we're going to twenty-two. I can even attack him with my Inventor's Apprentice, too. I really want to get aggressive. I think I'm going to get aggressive. Maybe I don't attack with it. Maybe I just block with the Inventor's Apprentice. Though I'm okay trading this here because it won't trade on on defense. My opponent finds another anthem. I think a new Teferi is sweet. Yep, I think your card's very good. I think the blue white flash deck is garbage. I think the uh, I think the um, blue white control deck is very good. I think that deck is sick. Then we put a counter on, we shoot with the ballista. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know, I don't know about that Archmage. I think a five drop in modern. It is it is relevant, but you know, five mana spell. I mean, I guess I guess like maybe it's better than uh maybe it's better than Gideon. Is it better than Gideon? So I, the only the only thing that like the I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this counter on now because I don't I don't think they play Fatal Push but like I'm not doing anything else in my man I don't have any cards in my hand I 
Um, the problem that I don't like necessarily with the the Revler decks that play that sucks. It, it kind of sucks. Now I have to do some serious combat math. The one thing I don't like about, um, God, I can't even think. The things I don't like about the Bedlam Reveler Pyromancer Shadow decks is they just don't have a clock that's like Dotsie's Tarmogoyf, like your backup plan's worse. And it's a much worse, it's a much worse team or Battle Rage deck. And I think like Battle Rage is like really important. This is a big draw step. Uh, one, two. I can still put a counter on my ballista. If I do this. Yeah, I can still put a counter on my ballista. And Murder Blaze is just game. Alright, that's gotta be good. Right? Because that shoots this. And then... I have good attacks with both of my harvesters. I gain six life. My opponent cracks back for two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight. Or they you cry back for ten, fourteen. I'm assuming something in here dies. Yeah, I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna play this, nug this, double crew crack with all three of these creatures. I don't think there's a way that I die next turn. If they put a Heart of Kirin on an Aether Sphere Harvester, then I can just pop it with the Ballista. Oh, that's a pretty nut draw. And they have to they have to block something. So they have to block here. Well, I guess they don't. They can just block this. Okay, so that, that was actually, that was a sick draw. To be fair, this is literally the Jun Shadow Shell with Gorgeous and TGR, but it plays looting. Oh, we're, oh so it plays... Like Man of some Reveler. Have a look at it. I, I, I just assumed that it had the uh, that it had the Young Pyromancer build. That was like that was a nut draw there. I think the Scrounger is a better attack than the Nerd Ape. You should just whisper it to me, and then I'll look at it right now. Okay, we go to Crew Town. So his heart's dying. No matter, and if his heart blocks, it dies. So another reason for not attacking with Nerd Ape is that this here deals more damage. Makes sure that I only have to ping once to finish it off. <laughs> and now my opponent has to cobble together some kind of attack also because Chandra plus Ballista kills them. They need to produce an air blocker and a way to deal with Chandra plus Ballista. So if, they, if their last card is like Lyra, if they go land Lyra, I could be in trouble. Well, not even land Lyra because, well, no, land Lyra would be bad unless I draw the land. There it is. They're just gonna hold back their heart. Okay. So this deck here, the problem with Lingering Souls is like Lingering Souls dominates about 30% of the format and it's a joke against the rest of it. 
So I don't like Lingering Souls in the main deck of this deck. Ooh, that was a good one. So what does that do? That is... I should have shot two of those. I was, like, moving back and forth. Two, four... And that just doesn't, doesn't just kill me. Right? This is five, nine... Nine... Two, four, six, eight... Okay, yeah, I should have definitely shot some of those, but... I don't think this does anything, right? Two, four, six, two, four, six, eight... Plus nine is seventeen. Great. Great. We get to we get to dual we get the dual task and not get punished for it. Dude, everyone's I'm everybody's bad at remembering things. It happens to the best of us. So I don't I don't think my opponent has an has an out here, right? I mean unless I just like completely miss this. An exclamation point pump. So my opponent just like hoping that I don't see this, which, you know, could happen. Maybe they have the city's blessing. No, they're dead. Why would you waste your time? I guess I'm blind on time. I need to fire up both. Fire up both. I guess it would have been less clicks for me to just purely put counters on the Harvester, on the Ballista. <coughs> we could have accidentally walking Ballista targeted ourselves. We could have. We could have. All right. So Swaltering Suns is aces. I don't think Chandra is very good against this version of the deck. I think I want Glorybringer just to fly over the top of all the bullshit. Um, a Braid's probably okay. A Dire Fleet Daredevil might buy me back some Servo Expeditions to at least block. Uh, cards I'm not super excited about. Again, I don't really like Nerd Ape against these decks, but it's probably better against this deck, Nerd Ape is. We probably could just ditch our scrap heap scroungers. We probably don't need all of these upgrades, though we do want some removal. We probably the hazard's probably not going to do anything here. Because it's just going to get chumped, and its clock's just not fast enough. But we're bringing the glory bringers, we're probably going to need this. Chandra is awkward in buildings. I'd rather cut all of our one drop neuters, to be honest. But like the nerd apes, the nerd apes actually block decently here. Bomat might be actually, Bomat might be the worst thing we're doing here. So let's let's try this. Cause I think I think Jerry cut all of his. I think Jerry was cutting all of his one drops against all these decks. Let's check out what Jerry was doing. Our boy G. Oh, Goblin Chain Whirlers. So against Goblin Chain Whirlers, he cut all of his bow mats. I'm gonna, board like this is similar because like X1s are invalidated all over the place. I'm gonna keep some scraps. Cut my Chandras. Let's see what this looks like. I wonder if again, like we're supposed to just turn into a Bloodfast deck. Like, P is probably okay. It's a lot of removal. I'm gonna cut two. I'm gonna cut two abrades and bring in some blood fasts. I think we're supposed to just, I think maybe we're just supposed to turn into like some control deck, you know, like where we just board into like removal, card draw, and then win with like something. All right, at least we can kill one of their guys. <clears throat> I 
This is probably gonna be like a turn four blood fast and use it. Cause like, I think we're just gonna go one, two, three. I think getting Harvester going is just so huge. Harvester's just so good. Like I don't even like cutting Harvester against control decks because I bring in blood fast against control decks and like it just sits there and it like gets in a couple points of damage, gains me like three to six life, lets me draw two to three more cards and like it gives all of my creatures like pseudo haste against the control decks. I'm gonna be curving out for the rest of the games. So do I just have to like magma spray this and like just be sad? I'm gonna save this because I could like ballista plus magma spray down. Um, ballista plus magma spray down a, a Benelis Marshal at some point. <coughs> We won that game through a Gideon. And I don't remember if we were on the player of the draw, but not the rest. No, no, turn off audio, turn off audio, damn it. <sighs> Just took one point of damage that I didn't have to, which is more than likely gonna turn into way more points at some point, because these are gonna get huge. No plays. No plays. No plays. Lower dead. All right, so we're gonna get Bloodfast down. And then just leave open, drawing a card or doing something else. And I wonder if we're supposed to exert with our glory dad. History of the Nalia. Yeah, we're definitely gonna exert on that. I think I'm just gonna use my removal. As awkward as this all sounds, I think I'm just gonna like try to clear my hand out, try to get everything down, keep this board under control and just survive. Get to a point where I have a stable life total. Yeah, that's that's a really good, that's a good draw as well. I could play that, but I think I just wanna get the Glorybringer in play. And like the longer the Glorybringer stays in play, the better it's gonna be for the home team here. And I can Ballista for three next turn. I can Ballista for three and get in with my Harvester. And then I can like have untapped the next turn with six mana and be able to like do a bunch of other stuff. Scrap boy feels bad. All right. I think I'm gonna save that for the angel. The big question here is do I do this for three and then shoot this for two on my opponent's turn just to save me some life? Maybe someone only getting cracked for basically one point of damage after this hit? I think that's what I'm supposed to do. So I'm just gonna crew the harvester and then shoot this knight down. And we've kind of innate, like we've kind of chewed through this history of Benalia. Now, obviously, my opponent has had a shit draw, like they missed their fourth land, so like we're beating the shit out of somebody that, you know, missed their land drops. But and then I'm just, I'm just gonna shoot. I'm just gonna pop this off. I want this game. The longer that I can like keep myself at a high life total, the longer, the better. Like this blood fast is just gonna take this game over. And we're getting in for a lot of damage next turn. And we're probably just gonna exert on something. Like any target my opponent gives me, okay? That's not bad. That thing's getting murder blades though. Probably just exert on the scrap heap scrounger. Make my, my opponent's choked on mana anyways. Usually exerting on scrappy is not very good, but I wanna just, I just wanna choke their mana as much as possible. And like they, they don't have time to bring this scrap reef scrounger back and use their mana. That's a good draw because that means I get two cards off of this Bloodfast or a Ballista counter, whatever. 
tickles my fancy. Murder Blade. This I can't. I'm surprised they didn't go. They didn't attack. But I guess I could have. They held this back. I could have just pinged this. Now, 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 I'm definitely putting a counter on the Blista because I can only draw one card. There, because I tapped like an asshole. And then, like, put a counter on, untap, put a counter on, is lethal on its own. Yeah, I definitely think against these white-black decks, these red-black decks just need to turn into, like, a removal in flyers with Bloodfast. Man, we are playing for the 5-0. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting pretty pumped. Philly! Philly boy! Philly boy! Aw. Here. Come on, babe, buddy. We're playing for the 5 0, bud. What are we doing, Dad? Philly, we're playing for the 5 0. This is a big game, Philly. Playing, we're both playing for the 5 0. I gotta ship this hand. Can't keep this. Yeah, we'll keep this. Hopefully, there's an artifact. I think I need lands. But I need artifacts, too. I think I wanna put this on the bottom. My hand's just so much, but well, actually, the artifacts aren't even turned on. The lands aren't even turned on because they're, we don't have artifacts, so I'm just gonna ship them. I can't even cast Murder Blaze with that, so. Oh, we're in trouble. Yeah, we are, we're in trouble. We're gonna learn untap the land of world. This isn't good. Here comes a Steel Leaf, dude. Now, that's probably would be Mono Green. Glincy Siphoner? All right, opponent's gonna give me a chance. Still don't have any. All right, so we definitely have to play Scrappy Scrounger. Cause it's just gonna do more damage. And it's gonna let me uh, Murder Blaze this Siphoner next turn. Hopefully they don't just like curve into a freaking Bristling Hydra. If they curve into Hydra, at least I get to kill this. Alright, good. We do get to kill this. And then we're going to be able to attack. We don't even take any damage. And my battlefield's going to be kind of decent next turn. Like, <clears throat> my battlefield's going to have 9 power in play. Its opponent that seems to be like a little bit out of out of gas. I mean, we're out of gas too as soon as we get this into play. We're gonna need like one more good draw step. A flyer would be great here. Hazret would be amazing. Hazret would be the nut. Because like Hazret can just like attack next turn as well. <coughs> and it's just gonna be tough to handle. Oh, okay, it's a big Hulk. That blows this open. So they can just put like, they can just put two counters on each of the land war elves, and then like I can't attack, and then they hold off all my entire board. So if they put two counters on each of these, we're just gonna need like infinite murder blazes, or we're gonna need a flyer. All right, P is P is pretty good. I'm gonna play my land. Because if I draw another land next turn, I can pump the Pia even more. Look at this. This taps and adds two mana. Okay, so my opponent's fun now. Which is good for the Wow, they didn't attack. I feel like you had to make some kind of attack there. Unless they have an answer to this. Which would suck. Um, yeah, I'm going to get Bodad. I'm gonna get Bodad going. It's just another claw. It's another. I lose a point, but it's also like I lose a point of power here. But this also gives me a redraw. We should have a lot of sweet draws. That's a sweet draw. Uh, I think we're still gonna leave this though, so we're gonna just gonna pump this.
That gives them blue mana. If they have like a Hadana's climb, that's gonna be pretty annoying. Another Hulk, okay. The big H. So they should just, I think they should just put these counters, they need to put like a lot of these counters on a Hulk, yeah. So we're gonna get smacked here. Then we're gonna have to do a braid next turn. Scrounger doesn't do anything. I think we just hold the Scrounger. I should do this right now so they don't get blossoming defense out of this game. So my opponent gets too crazy with their attack, then all of a sudden I can crack back for a lot of damage. Like, if they attack me with this Verter Steer Hulk. I can double block here. So then if they attack with these as well, then I go like double block, take four. And I've got a Hulk left, and I've got a Nerd Ape in this back. Okay, that's that's a really good, that's a pretty good draw for them. What'd I miss? Buttons. Did I miss it? I, I totally could have. Just poking in. I don't play this deck too, too much. So I, if I missed it, then let me know. And I will figure, I will learn from it. explain it then there's no need to say it right like let me know here if I'm making mistakes because I don't think I did right because he had too many blockers he just brick walls all my stuff right it's tricky means I'm running out of time one of these for a nerd ape. So I have two blockers back. Um, I can't even attack my scroungers. Serious, we're running out of time here because now they're gonna start drawing. Well, we're gonna punish them for drawing cards. So, my opponent can if my opponent attacks with everything, I can't double block. If I have anything, then I can't, then I'm in a lot of trouble because, like, I, I couldn't have double blocked anything. But that's like I have two cards in hand, so that could be like a hard, a hard thing to do. So, what plays here? Murder Blaze plays. Bomat kind of plays. Block. Block here. Take. Block this. Take two, five, seven. So I'm dead if I block. I'm dead if I attack with my Bomat courier because I can't block enough things. So what I'm gonna do here is, I think I'm gonna turn the Scrap Heap Scroungers sideways and the Bomat Couriers, sack the Bomat Courier before blocks, and look to spike into something that finishes the game here. 
Because even if I block this right here, I take one, three, one, three, five, six. I'm at seven. If I hold Bowmat back, I'm not winning that game, especially when they're drawing two cards. If I hit a way to kill this, all of a sudden my opponent has to block at least one of these here. Like this blocks this, or this blocks this. And then I have a blocker back, and I get in for three points, setting something up next turn. If I block, if I get a murder blaze, then I need to block with two creatures. So I think I think we're gonna play to win here because I'm I'm like certainly dead. Yeah, we didn't hit it there. And I could have waited until blocked, but I wanted to make it so this couldn't get into combat to make him so that he's got to trade a creature off. And I'm dead. I'm dead either way here. As long as he blocks here, it's two, five, seven. Yeah. I don't think, like, and obviously, like, I just suicide attacked in there, but, like, I think I was playing, like, the longer that game goes, the worse it gets for me. So I want Dire Fleet, Daredevil, Glorybringer, Vraska's Contempt, um, Doomfall. I think I want Bloodfast. I know in Jerry's article, he says he just turns into a red-black control deck. Um, I'm not really into Walking Ballista. Um, let me see here. He cuts the nerd apes too. I need to cut a couple more cards. I think I'm gonna cut my magma sprays when I'm on the play and look to bring them back in when I'm on the draw. So let's try this. I'm gonna cut the Hazret as Hazret plus Bloodfast seems kind of awkward. I have to cut just one more card. Which card is my worst? None of my removal. Flyers are good. Probably just Pia because of Snake. Looks like I need some light in here. I'm gonna take my pup out after this league. I'll probably run back another one. All right, this hand is good, not great. But I don't think you can mulligan this. Well, this is like a mulligan. So I'm already at six cards. But going Scrounger into Harvester is good. So if you're afraid, you untap Gear Hulk, play Scrounger, then sack into the four. Scrounger and Pia, you can equip three, two, threes. God, I'm sorry about this night bot here. Here for seven exactly. Then I missed it. Then I missed it. Then I missed it. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna keep this. <coughs> we have like. Like, this card's very good in the matchup. I like this card, and I like this card. This can hit a snake, and this is just kind of an aggressive creature here. I definitely need to get rid of this Nightbot. How do you unmod Nightbot? Nightbot's frustrating. I'll have to go look back at that. that. That sounds like a very interesting line of play that I like could have seen around. Okay, that's a great draw.
So if my opponent plays like a snake here, I think I'm just gonna abrade it and then pass the fatal push that. Okay. That's gotta be like a sign of weakness. Branch Walker into Varaskis Okay, so I think they're low on lands. So I can play Blood Fast and start getting that going. I think I'm gonna get this Blood Fast down because if I get punished if I hit a creature, because then I can't swing in with a harvester. But if I miss on a land drop, I'm gonna want to dig to my land drop. I think my opponent's short on land. If they're ditching natural life, they must not have lands. Okay, they have lands. All right, Canyon Slew is fine. <coughs> I'm just gonna kill one of these right now before I get Blossoming Defense out of the game. Then we hit a land, we just untap, we Glory Bringer him. That's a painful mana base. My opponent's got nothing here. All right, we need a land. I'm gonna go dig in for land versus play like a harvester. The problem is if I play harvester and hit a land next turn, then I'm not I'm not crewing it. So I think we're just gonna dig for a land. Bodad's all right. It's not a land, but it's a good. If we're gonna miss. It's a good one to miss on. We're gonna hit for three here. More than likely, I've got to kill this. I guess, I guess this is actually stupid because I'm not playing around Verdurous Gear Hulk at all. Yeah, this was this whole line of play was stupid. Yeah. This was all just stupid. I'm like, I just didn't even think about Hulk. Like he just loads up onto this and then smacks me. If I draw a land, I get to go blaze a braid, which is good for the home team. And now I'm just actually dead. Let me see what the card underneath here is. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe I was supposed to mulligan that hand there. Maybe I was just supposed to mulligan. I should have definitely done something else with my turn. We still finished 4 1, which is good with the league. I should have done something else with my turn. The turn that I activated Bloodfast because I didn't. I just played right into Verdurous Gearhold, dump your counters, and kill me. 